solid state fixes the biggest limitations of lithium ion, energy density, charging speed, lifetime, and safety. But here's the reality. Until today, there are no vehicles in production using solid state batteries. Not one, not at scale, and not shipping to customers. Today we are making history because Donut Battery is the world's first solid state battery in production vehicles shipping to customers. Solid state batteries are supposed to fix everything lithium ion cannot. Higher energy density, ultra fast charging, extreme lifespan, and real safety. That has been the promise for more than 20 years. But here is the uncomfortable truth. Until today, not a single solid-state battery has been mass-produced inside vehicles that real customers can actually buy. Not one. Not at scale. Not shipped worldwide. And that is exactly why what you are about to hear has shaken the entire battery industry. Because according to multiple confirmations, Donut Lab has now crossed that line. For the first time in history, solid-state batteries are not just prototypes, not lab samples, not future promises. They are already inside production vehicles and already shipping to customers. That alone would be historic. But what Donut Lab claims goes far beyond that. On January 5, 2026, a post on X confirmed that Donut Lab has produced an all-solid-state, non-toxic, thermally stable, high-performance battery. Even more shocking, the battery does not use lithium. It does not use cobalt. Instead, it is based on a sodium ion composition and ceramic materials that are supposedly easier to scale and far cheaper to source. Let's be very clear. If even half of these claims are true, this is not a small improvement. This is a complete break from everything the battery industry has relied on for over 30 years. No lithium. No rare metals. A 5-minute full charge. A lifespan of up to 100,000 cycles, which could translate to nearly a century of use. That combination alone explains why this announcement sent shockwaves through the industry. And why a small startup from Finland is suddenly being watched very closely by giants like Toyota, Samsung SDI, and QuantumScape. Whether they admit it publicly or not, Donut Lab may already be several years ahead in one very specific direction of research. But here is where things get uncomfortable. Why should anyone trust this battery when Donut Lab has not publicly released patents? Is this really a chemical battery designed for electric vehicles? Or is it something else entirely? A pseudo supercapacitor? A hybrid system hiding behind battery language? For engineers and researchers who have followed battery development since nickel cadmium and early lithium ion days, skepticism is not negativity. It is survival instinct. The battery world has promised miracles again and again. Most never left the lab. Some never existed at all. So instead of blind excitement or instant rejection, the only serious approach is to examine the contradictions. And strangely enough, when you do that carefully, Donut Lab starts to look less impossible and more unfamiliar. The biggest shock is this question. Is it even a battery? The loudest debate at CS 2026 was not about range or cost, but about identity. Critics argued that Donut Lab's device behaves more like a capacitor than a battery. And at first, that criticism sounds logical. A full charge in five minutes and a lifespan of 100,000 cycles are classic capacitor traits, not battery traits. Traditional batteries depend on slow ion diffusion into electrodes. That process causes wear and limits lifespan. Capacitors, on the other hand, store charge on surfaces. They can charge instantly and last almost forever. So critics ask the obvious question. If it acts like a capacitor, isn't it just a capacitor? But here is where the argument breaks. Capacitors fail badly at one critical point. Energy density. Even the best supercapacitors struggle to exceed 20 watt-hours per kilogram. Donut Lab claims 400 watt-hours per kilogram. That is nearly double Tesla's best cylindrical cells and far beyond what sodium ion batteries currently achieve. If Donut Lab is truly using amorphous ceramic structures like amorphous titanium dioxide, the usual rules may not apply in the same way. Amorphous materials do not crack like crystals. 
they can tolerate rapid ion movement. That alone could explain both extreme lifespan and fast charging without fantasy physics. Now pause here for a moment. If you're finding this breakdown useful, make sure to subscribe to Tech Drive right now. We cover real EV breakthroughs, not hype, not clickbait, and you don't want to miss what's coming next. Now back to the controversy. The most emotional moment in the Donut Lab story did not come from chemistry debates. It came from what people saw at CS. Or more accurately, what they didn't see. There were no live charging demos. No cells powering devices in real time. Visitors saw modules, enclosures, and battery packs, but not a naked cell being tested under neutral observation. For engineers, this immediately triggered alarm bells. History has trained the tech world to associate empty showcases with overhyped delusions. Comparisons to past scandals appeared almost instantly. Not out of malice, but pattern recognition. When a company claims revolutionary technology yet avoids live demos, skepticism is unavoidable. But stopping there would miss something important. Donut Lab never intended CS to convince the public. Their strategy has always targeted OEMs, not journalists. According to Donut Lab and multiple industry reports, fully functional battery packs have already been shipped to manufacturers and research institutions under strict NDAs. These partners can test charge speed, cycle life, thermal stability, and power output. What they cannot do is open the cells or publicly discuss internal structures. That detail matters. Because it reframes the issue from Does it exist? To Who is allowed to see it? From a competitive perspective, this approach is risky but logical. In battery technology, exposing internal structure even briefly can erase years of advantage. Reverse engineering is guaranteed. Donut Lab CEO openly admitted competitors will buy Verge motorcycles, tear them apart, and analyze everything. His argument is not denial. It's delay. In a race where first-mover advantage defines supply chains and licensing power, even weeks matter. That doesn't prove Donut Lab is right. But it weakens the idea that CS alone proves deception. Another point fueling disbelief is the size of the company itself. Donut Lab reportedly has fewer than a dozen technical staff. Toyota has spent decades and billions developing solid-state batteries and still targets limited production around 2027. The idea that a tiny startup could leapfrog Toyota feels offensive to common sense. But history doesn't care about comfort. Lithium-ion itself came from focused material breakthroughs, not corporate scale. Giants industrialized it later. Scale follows chemistry not the other way around. Toyota's struggle has centered on brittle crystalline electrolytes, cracks, dendrites, catastrophic failures. If Donut Lab avoided crystalline structures entirely by using amorphous ceramics and unconventional manufacturing like nanofluid printing, they may have sidestepped Toyota's bottleneck rather than defeating it head-on. That doesn't mean Toyota failed. It means Donut Lab chose a different road. The most controversial claim remains lithium elimination. Lithium dominates batteries because of physics. Low weight. High voltage. Remove it, and most equations collapse. That's why sodium, zinc, and aluminum systems usually sacrifice energy density. Unless the mechanism itself is different. If energy storage relies more on surface-based redox reactions instead of deep ion diffusion, voltage becomes less dominant. Pseudo-capacitive behavior in nanostructured amorphous materials changes the rules. Titanium dioxide, long dismissed, looks very different when engineered correctly. At solid-state architecture, thermal stability, and non-flammable design, and lithium-free suddenly becomes less impossible. Still extraordinary, but not magic. One concern remains real and unresolved. Volumetric energy density. Donut Lab talks openly about weight, but says little about size. For motorcycles, space is manageable. For cars, it's critical. A light but bulky battery limits scalability. That question will not stay hidden for long. OEM testing will expose it. And that is why companies like Toyota are watching carefully. Not because Donut Lab has already won. But because it might be playing a different game entirely. 
If this technology holds even partially, supply chains change. Geopolitics change. Lithium dependency weakens. Manufacturing economics shift. Skepticism is still justified. Extraordinary claims still demand extraordinary proof. Independent verification is essential. But for the first time, this story is no longer pure fantasy. There is a coherent material science narrative behind it. The next few months will decide everything. If Donut Lab fails, the industry moves on. If it succeeds, the lithium era may not end with an explosion, but with a quiet pivot. And the biggest players already know what that would mean. Thanks for watching Tech Drive. Subscribe so you don't miss our next deep dive. The next Tesla update drops in just two days. Hit like, share this video, turn on notifications, and we'll see you next time.